Rob Palenka's deadline deal, which included acquiring D'Angelo Russell, Jared Vanderbilt, and Malik Beasley in exchange for Russell Westbrook, has given the Lakers the number one defense in the NBA and an eye-popping 8-3 record since that trade. Just one game back of the number six seed out west as of this recording, we're going to look at how D-Loading exploited my Raptors defense, and on the other side of the court, evaluate how Vanderbilt's helped instill Coach Darvin Ham's defensive-minded culture. Before the Westbrook trade, the front office in LA was public enemy number one, but the eye-popping robbery they pulled off will go down in history as one of the most impactful last-minute moves of all time. In the absence of D'Angelo, who sprained his ankle in his Laker debut, and the continued absence of LeBron, who's still on a scooter and in a boot nursing his own ankle setback, you have to credit two players who were here before the deadline for picking up the slack first and foremost. Those two players being Austin Reeves and Dennis Schroeder, who've collectively made up for the playmaking lost with the Purple and Gold's current injury dwellings. The foul drawing and general dribble penetration from those two in large part has kept this Laker team in the playoff picture, providing the adequate pick and roll ball handling to keep Darvin Ham's team afloat. Anthony Davis has also resembled his prime self, posting 29 points per game on a 58-44-80 shooting split in the month of March thus far, but AD had just 8 points against Toronto, and of course the Lakers were missing their top player in LeBron as well. That's why it's so noteworthy that Russell and Vanderbilt were still able to pick up the slack and fuel Los Angeles to a W. We'll get to D. Loading's return, but in terms of Jared Vanderbilt, his meticulous awareness, whether guarding in the full court press, the passing lanes in the half court, or one-on-ones, have been all at an elite level ever since he touched down at LAX. This man almost single-handedly has changed the Laker culture with his generational defense. Just watch the elusiveness from Jared to fake the full sprint back in transition, which gets DeAnthony Melton assuming he's got a clear lane to cross half court. Even as he attempts to get back into the play, it still kind of looks like Jared's running backwards. That tough to gauge movement both cuts off Melton's angle to the left and baits DeAnthony into a rushed outlet, which Jared breaks up and collects before getting fouled. Displaying versatility in the half court, he's first going to guard Doncic on this pick and roll entry, then switch on to Dwight Powell, but after trailing Powell to the paint, watch this slight step backwards which gets Doncic thinking Jared's about to rotate completely over to Dwight, but he just pivots off that fake step back to spring up in the air for the ideal contest on this Doncic floater. Always one step ahead mentally of the offense. Here, he blitzes Doncic's post back down, runs after Bullock after the kickout, before pivoting out of that fake rotation to intercept the pass. Again, making multiple elusive rotations within one possession, Jared's going to both shut down this kick out to Boucher with this angled stance, positioning his right lead foot directly in front of Chris, then take it a step further by directly trapping him before he knocks away Boucher's outlet to Trent Jr. and beats Gary to the loose ball by saving it from going out. As a Raptor fan, this drive and ill-advised pass from Ananobi happens far too often for him, but nonetheless, Vanderbilt's lurking in the perfect spot to anticipate the kickout. Watch how just as OG releases this pass, Jared seems like he's about to rotate out to the perimeter to pick it off, but then instinctively just rotates back to Pirtle for the interception. Making nothing easy guarding an ISO, he's going to make this entry pass on the weak side to Doncic, as tough as it can possibly be, then keep his hands up, shuffle his feet swiftly, and get out to make this a fully contested look on Luka. In that game in Dallas, Jared's havoc ensuing pressure in every area defensively fueled the biggest comeback of this NBA season and worked to shut down Doncic. Jared opened up about his defense in that game, saying, I like the challenge every single night. You know, being able to guard the best players no matter one through five, I think I'm capable of doing that. I think that's my value and my impact on this team, end quote. Jared's offense is also pretty solid, as he's undervalued on that end of the court, which is a story for another day, but as this man said, he makes his money off clamping up attackers regardless of their position. 
All-NBA defender Anthony Davis would rave about Jared's defense in that Dallas outing, saying post-game, being down 27, 14 at half, and he comes out and sets the tone defensively on Luka, getting some steals, making him shoot tough shots, his rebounding on both ends. It started to affect our group to lock in defensively. His value for our team, you can't even put into words what he does for us and brings to us, end quote. But moving on to D. Loading's workshop offensively in his return against Toronto, where he dropped 28 points and 9 assists on 76% true shooting. Russell's swift shot creation was exemplified in strong side give and goes like this one, where he up fakes to get Van Vliet to fly by, then utilizes a triple threat move before blowing past Fred to his off hand. The same action but without the handoff play with AD sees D loading whip out a moving crossover and curry slide, drawing two defenders on his drive, and then thread the needle to AD for the pick and roll connection. Then he puts Van Vliet on an island in a semi-transition, going double between the legs cross into a third straight off-handed drive. He's gonna catch it on the weak side right here, jab left to get Barnes off balance, drive into his jab step to the other side, get all five Raptor defenders thinking floater, before sending a bullet to Hachimura for the triple. Same fake floater and kick out takes place right here, this time to find Dennis Schroeder for the triple in the corner. From there, albeit mixed in with the occasional drop off pass in the pick and roll, after the plays you just saw, it was essentially straight sauce creating off the dribble and hitting difficult leaners individually from Russell that he showed off. Pushing it up at a Max Verstappen-esque pace in transition, this shows you how D'Angelo's stopping on a dime and off the dribble shooting has vamped significantly, as here he's going to hit the brakes and pass fake to Davis ever so slightly, then hit a contested triple in the face of one of the game's best perimeter defenders. After this AD big body takes Van Vliet out of the equation, given the hefty amount of passes he made in this action in the first half, the other four Toronto defenders are wary of Davis in the pick and roll, so D'Angelo just leans back for the mid-range fader. You have to love how D'Angelo mixes up his facilitation and shot creation so damn elusively. He's evidently come a long way with that since his last tenure in the City of Angels, but where will the Lakers finish in the West and why, in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by March 21st earn free merch of their choosing. Today's shout out goes to Joshua Rosen, who says De'Aaron Fox has been unstoppable and his points per game the last month is even more impressive considering he doesn't shoot threes at a high volume. I think Mike Brown has also made a huge difference for this Kings team. I'm a big fan of Mike Brown and his coaching style. I try to take parts of his coaching style into my own because of how effective he is. I think De'Aaron Fox has always had a high ceiling, but the inclusions of DeMontis Sabonis and Kevin Herter have allowed him to shine through as the leader of a true Western Conference Finals contender. De'Aaron Fox could definitely use his own breakdown in a vid. His drives to the rim are elite. Story is yours and community speaks, so leave your take.